Well, yesterday we brought you the tragic story of nine-year-old Amal. She came to Canada as a Syrian refugee and wanted to be a nurse one day. But the Calgary girl, just nine years old, ended up taking her own life. Her parents say she was being bullied at school. At school? At school, yeah. They were uh, they, like uh, bullying her all the time and uh, telling her, like, you're ugly or you're, you're not beautiful. Two weeks before they moved from uh, that school to another school, a kids came uh, to her and told her, even if you move to another school, they're not going to love you. You better just uh, go and kill yourself. Now, Sam Namura with the Calgary Immigrant Support Society joins us this morning to discuss the issue. Thank you for coming in to talk Thanks. about this. When you see that, um, your reaction, obviously, it's such a tragic, tragic outcome for this young girl. Actually, this is really what's shocking to all of us, not only to the family, but to the community at large. And losing a nine years old uh, uh, kid just like that, and we know how vulnerable she were she was, uh, but uh, just uh, just the, the death uh, the death itself was really hard, and the family and on the friends and community, especially the way she took her life. Can we talk a little bit about what was happening? And it sounded like the parents had tried to address the situation at the school. Um, we know the school board has come forward and said that it worked closely with the school staff and students, but they didn't find that there was indica any indication of bullying or concern raised to the school. But, however, there's another story coming from the parents. Can we talk a little bit about that? Well, I've, uh, uh, well but the trouble for me, really, the, the finding of the Calgary Board of Education have no sign of uh, bullying for the, and especially what you, what you hear from the family, for the two months uh, prior to the incident, uh, the family noticed a major change in her, in her behavior, in her attitude, in her refusal uh, to go to school or attend the schools. She was so intimidated by going to school. Uh, so what the mom used to say uh, is like, the, my daughter leaves going home, going, leaving home so happy and always come back from school. She's just crying. She keeps saying, I don't want to go to school. I don't want to go back to school because of the things that happened with her uh, being mocked, harassed, uh, bullied, and also the inability of the parents to address these issues in, 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 a, in, a, in a positive way or in a productive way. So even they say something's wrong with my, with my kids, but they really failed uh, to just get the, uh, 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 the proper and needed attention from teachers of the school staff to what's going on with this uh, uh, little girl and all what they hear is like maybe something wrong at home, but they always undermine what the parents were saying. And that's really the frustration part to say that like everything was normal. It's not normal. It was cleared. It was communicated, but somehow it was just like neglected or just pushed away. Now, this is one incident, but how widely are you hearing about situations among the community about um, young children, even adults, having a hard time trying to fit in? Um, actually, and this is really not, uh, and this is not common. This is just like, uh, just like, uh, uh, let's say even the first time we hear about that's tragic or that level of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, a problem within the uh, young students or youth. We do hear about it, but just like a normal, just like any other uh, piece of the society. And the only problem that I want to really emphasize on is uh, the newcomers, they looked at and they, they're always required to act like with the grateful. So even if they have a problem, they're intimidated not to address it, not to talk about it. Because we're new here, you get in everything, you get in education, you get in medical, you get in all the stuff. So they're really shy away from complaining. And even if they want to complain, they don't know how. Even like in this incident, even their family did not even know that they could go and, com and complain to, to, uh, to school about what's going on. So they were so uh, shy even in their request, even though seeing their uh, own child drifting uh, 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 away, but they failed to communicate that concerns and, and lack of language. And, and, and different cultures, it really is making, um, playing a major role in this. But again, uh, uh, parents mainly unable to communicate that to the, to, to, to the school. And the students are so intimidated not to complain because they don't want to cause the trouble uh, with, the, with the school, with the staff or the teachers or, or their, their friends. But it's happening just like any other schools, but the, the circumstances are different. The trauma that they've been through for the last seven years, definitely it, it plays a role. Uh, the language barrier, because there is a difference between being able to communicate and being able to express your feelings and your thoughts. So in your opinion, what needs to be done then? 
definitely we need to raise the awareness of these issues in general bullying in the school that's to start with and definitely we need to do more uh, uh, educations to, uh, to teachers in particular about the multiculturalism uh, issues I mean when you deal with the, with the people who just came into the country uh, with that one year or two years uh, if they speak English that doesn't mean they're really able to get the stuff out so we need to I would say we need more uh, counseling who are experienced and familiar with multicultural issues, racism issues, and, and stuff like that. Okay. So yeah. not just like a typical ordinary kid. Thank you so much for coming in. And Thank you very much for having me. Us. Um, if you or someone you know is struggling and needs help with counseling or just someone to talk to, you can reach the Calgary Counseling Center hotline at 403 691 5991, the crisis line at 403 266 HELP, and for children, the kids' help phone at 1 800 668 6868.